Morning, guys. I'm going to help you through with question number five on page 89. Actually, I'm not going to do that question. I'm going to do an example that's like that one. But I thought I'd put it into a context that you're going to understand. And unfortunately, we're going to have to teach a little bit of math before we do it. All right, so how's this going to look? We can't do this particular question, but we're going to do a different one. I don't want to take all your fun away from me. All right, so if you had a question like 25x equals 15x squared, I'm going to teach you how to solve this because the math is going to get in the way of solving this problem with Robert and Michael. So we got to figure out how we're going to deal with the math. So I'm going to do a quick little math thing with you first. And after that, you should be good to go with the assignment. But we'll see. So we're, the improper way to do this, the way some sloppy mathematicians might teach you to do this, is to take the 25x equals 15x squared. Some of you might take the x on both sides and cancel it. Then you'd be left with 15x equals 25. Then you might divide by 15. Both sides would leave x here. Reduce this by 5 and you'd get 5 divided by 3. So you'd get 1.6. Okay? So that would be one way to do it. However, this is the improper way. Not the best way to do it. Okay, so what's the proper way to solve this then? Well, the way the math types want is you should take everything to one side and leave zero. So technically you take 25x, we'll subtract 25x from the left, and we'll take 15x squared. If I've done that to the left, I have to do that to the right as well. So 25x minus 25x, that is zero. You get 15x squared minus 25x on this side. I would take a common factor of 5x out of each of the two terms. That would leave a 3x behind, thus you get 15x squared when you multiply them. And that would leave a 5 there. That way your 5x times 3x would give you 15x squared and minus 25x. So it would give you back to where you started. Now you have two different terms multiplying to get 0. That means the 5x must be equal to 0 or the 3x minus 5 must be equal to 0. Well, if the 5x is 0, then x is 0. So 0 over 5 is also 0. There's one answer. And the other answer, you take 3x equals 5 by migrating the 5 over, and x equals 5 over 3. There's the second answer. Notice we got one of those answers last time, but we didn't get the 0. So the proper way to do it is to factor it, not to just do some sloppy canceling. Okay, so what if instead the question had a plus 3 on it? So what if it was 25x equals 15x squared plus 3? What do you do then? Well, let's see what happens. 25x equals 15x squared plus 3. We'll still take everything to that side. 0 is 15x squared minus 25x plus 3. Now you've got to solve that. Well, unfortunately, you have to use the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This 15 is a. Negative 25 is b. And the 3 is C. So plugging that in, you have a negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4 times 15 times 3. And the whole thing over 2A. <clears throat> now this is a very mathy topic, but of course physics is just applied math. You're going to see that you're going to have to do one of these to actually solve your question. So if we continue with the math, negative, negative 25 plus or minus 25 squared is 625. Then you get uh, 6180 here. All over 2 times 15 is 30. So you get 
by plus or minus. Reno, we have a call. Announcement to Reno. Reno. 445 all over 30. I've had fun with the mental math thus far, thus far, but we need a calculator now. So we'll bring up the calculator, turn it on, and I've pre-worked them out that 25 plus square root 445 over 30 gives you 1.53 as one answer if you use the positive, and you get 0 0.130 if you use the negative. And those are the two x's that you get. And then from the question, you decide which one of those makes sense for us. Okay, so let's actually do an example. So the, let's say you have a car traveling at a constant speed of 10 meters per second when it passes a truck that's standing still. Okay, so at the instant that the car passes the truck, the truck begins to accelerate at 3 meters per second squared. How long does it take for the truck to catch up and then pass the car? And then, how far have they gone? So, lots of information. We're going to separate them up. So, the car is traveling at a constant speed. So, the speed of the car is 10 meters per second. So, let's call it VC, V car. At the instant the car passes the truck, the truck begins to accelerate. The truck was standing still, so the initial speed of the truck was zero. It's accelerating at 3 meters per second squared. And we don't know how long it is doing that for. Okay, so how do you solve this problem? Well, I know that when the car and the truck meet, they have gone the same distance. So I'm going to write the profound formula that the distance for the car equals distance per truck. All right, well, that's a lovely little formula to write. How is that going to help me along in a solution? Well, the distance for the car is easy. The formula for distance is speed times time. The problem is for the truck, the formula for distance is VIT plus one half AT squared. So the distance for my car is 10 meters per second times the time, which I'm going to leave as a T. The distance for my truck, VI is zero, so it's just one half a t squared. So my formula is 10 t equals 1.5 t squared. Now this is one of the first examples I did. It's an easy quadratic to solve, but don't cancel. Make it equal to 0. 1.5 t squared minus 10 t. Common factor if you don't see a common factor here, then just take the t out, and you get 1.5t minus 10. So you have two things that multiply to get 0. The t must be 0, or the 1.5t minus 10 must be 0. Solving this one, take 10 over here. So t is 10 over 1.5. That's 20 over 3, which gives us 6.6 repeating, so we'll round it off to 7. Okay, so you know that the car, the time it took for the truck to meet the car, it met the car at 0, and it met the car again 6.7 seconds later. So that answers the question, how long does it take? for the truck to meet the car. But it doesn't answer the how far are they gone. So the how far are they gone, you can either work out the distance the car has traveled or the distance the truck has traveled. Well, why not choose the easy formula of 10 times the time? 6.6 repeating times 10 would be 66.6 repeating meters or about 67 meters to round it off. So if you apply this type of scenario of working out the distance for a truck and distance for a car to the question number five, way back here, you've got Michael and Robert running 
The only trick on number five is there's a 75 meter difference between the two. But you've got to figure out a distance for one, distance for the other, and put those together and solve for time, and you're going to get through that question. So give her a shot. I've got the highest of hopes for you, and we'll see how it works out.